These presentations will work a comprehensive bookkeeping problem both within Excel as well as within QuickBooks. Excel having the advantages of being able to see all the components and how all those components fit together to make the end product, that end product, the financial statements. QuickBooks having the advantage of being able to use forms, simple data inputs, and an automated system in order to convert that simple data input into the end product, the financial statements. We will work each component of the problem in Excel first and then work that same information in QuickBooks. Hello, in this presentation we will be entering the setup customer balances within Excel and comparing how the setup of customers and balances might differ from that in software such as QuickBooks. If you would like more information about the QuickBooks Pro, take a look at our comprehensive course in the link below. First, we'll take a look at how it could be entered into software such as QuickBooks, then jump over to our Excel sheet and see how we can record that information into the Excel sheet. If we were to enter in new customers into QuickBooks, meaning we're starting a new business, the business has already been in operation, however, we have not yet entered that data into our bookkeeping system in a way that we want to track well, not yet putting it into the QuickBooks or in our case into the Excel data. When we enter the information we may have some customers that owe us money and we want to put the customer on the books and the fact that they owe us money on the books. If we do that within QuickBooks we may just have to just see the customer list, put in the list of customers and in essence just tell us the amount that they owe and QuickBooks will then put that on the books in some way and track the who owes us money so that we can invoice those individuals and track when we get payment from those individuals. For example, in this case, we may just have three customers that owe us money, one being Anderson Guitars, Jones Guitars the other, and Smith Guitars the last. And those are going to be the three individuals or companies that owe us money. And we can, in, ess in essence, just list out the amount owed to us within QuickBooks, meaning Anderson Guitars owes us 5000 Jones Guitars owes us 7500 Smith Guitars owes us 8000 If we put that information in, then QuickBooks will, in essence, track that information and put it on the financials as needed for us, creating some type of journal entry that uh, will make that possible. We're going to put that information into Excel and take a look at the type of journal entry that would be in process. What is QuickBooks possibly doing in order to keep this information in balance and track? the customers that we have owing us money. If we go back to our Excel worksheet, we see that last time we just entered the inventory here. We're not going to be doing anything with the inventory. I'm going to unhighlight that. The inventory is done working on that. And what we're going to be working on now is the people owing us money. What's the account showing that people owe us money? That's going to be the accounts receivable account. In essence, when we put customers in the books saying that they owe us money, we are increasing the receivable account. So that's what we would expect QuickBooks to do or some software to do if we were just to list out accounts and say they owe us money. Now, of course, we will have to do something to some other accounts as well in order to have an equal number of debits and credits. And we will talk about that as we go. When we do enter this data into the accounting software for accounts receivable, we also need to track it in some type of subsidiary ledger by not just date as it would be in the general ledger, but customer who owes us money that is in essence what we have put into the quickbooks system quickbooks just said just tell me who owes you money and put that beginning balance in the data so we're going to make a subsidiary ledger so i'm going to go all the way to the right and this is where our subsidiary ledger will be located and we'll see a new item over here with our subsidiary ledger and we're just going to keep going to the right past the financial statements past the inventory subsidiary ledger and we've got over here in cells cr uh, six or so and down, we'll see the accounts receivable subsidiary ledger. In essence, this is where we're just going to list out who owes us money so that we can add that up and put that into the books. So for example, we said that Anderson Guitars owes us money. So that's going to be the first item we'll have here. We're going to say Anderson Guitars, and that's going to be the first inventory. Ad. So I just put my cursor in uh, CR3 and just typed in Anderson and I had it fit formatted to highlight between those cells. So don't put your cursor in the middle and type, put your cursor in this first cell, CR3 and type, 
and then it'll uh, populate across of those three cells because of the way it's been set up there. So that's going to be the first person that owes us money. Now we have the debits and credits. We're going to represent that over here in the subsidiary ledger as well. However, we're always going to have debits because over here we're talking about accounts receivable, which is an asset, which has a debit balance. So in cell CR6, we're going to say that Anderson owes us $5,000. So I'm not going to put a comma or anything. I'm just going to type in 5000 that will then populate over here and we'll have this running balance then over here in cv3 we're going to say that jones guitars and again i'm typing that in cv3 not cw3 even though it will then center across the whole three cells there type it in over here in order to make that happen and we're then going to put in the balance in cv6 cv6 we're going to say 7500 no comma or anything needed that when we select enter it'll enter that data for us one more customer we're going to put down here and add a new customer in cr11 that will be smith guitars very original names and enter and note we're not in the middle here we're just right here in cr11 typing that information in and then in cell cr14 we will type the amount that of eight thousand dollars then we're going to go ahead and this item down here is going to be the total subsidiary ledger by customer that 20,500 if we double click on that that is in essence just summing up the ending balances for our customers three in this case Anderson Jones and Smith guitars owing us money and enter that is the information so that then is what needs to be on the books in terms of the receivable this 20,500 that's what people owe us that's what we will then put in our journal entry so we're going to scroll all the way back so i'm just going to go all the way back to the to the journal entry in order to record this we're holding down the left left arrow scrolling all the way back to our journal entry and scrolling up we see the first journal entry on one one we are in cell a eight we're going to put this one in one one as well and we see that we're really recording this amount here. We want a receivable on the books. That is what happens. People owe us money. And it's an asset. It needs to go up. So we're going to do the same thing to it, which in this case is a debit. So I'm going to copy that. And I'm going to put my cursor in B8. Right click. And we could type it in there, by the way. This isn't somewhere where you need to copy and paste or use the formula. But in order not to misspell anything, I'm going to paste it to 1, 2, 3. Not this way. I don't want to make it green. But I'm going to put it one, two, three. If you make it green, that's okay. But I'm going to keep it not green. I'd rather have it all nice blue and even, um, you know, colors there or whatever. So, and then we could just type in the number. I'm going to recalculate it. I'm going to say this equals the 5,000 from Anderson plus the 75 from Jones plus the 8,000. And then enter. And that should give us that same 20,500. That's what we're going to put in the receivable. We're going to need a credit too. I'm going to put that with a negative 20500. Once I select enter, it'll put brackets and a comma. And then we're going to just need to know what that account is going to be. And this what again, what QuickBooks just just puts an account in there. It just picks one and puts it in there. It usually picks an equity account, so I or it might pick um un, unknown revenue or something like that. Uh, uh or it might put it into opening balance equity. What we're going to do is put it into the equity account. We're just going to put that to the equity and hope that, or it should work out that, if we put in all the beginning balances correctly, that the equity will wash everything out and be correct as of the beginning point of the problem. That, in essence, is how QuickBooks allows us to just enter in beginning balances without journal entries and still work. It just forces it to put it into some type of balance. So we're going to put this into the opening balance equity. I'm going to copy that or owner's equity. And then I'm going to put that here in B9, right click, paste one, two, three. And then again, I'm going to indent it. You don't have to, but I'm going to go to the home tab, alignment and indent. If you cannot use the increase indent, you could just use the double click and use the space bar. If you can't indent because of formatting or the locked cells, then that's okay. Uh, you don't have to indent. And then we're going to record this now. In order to record this, I'm going to freeze the panes again. So I'm going to go back over here to uh, AJ1. I'm going to go to the tabs. We're going to go to the view tab. 
we're going to go to the Windows group. Remember, these are the groups down here. If you're trying to tell someone how to move around, this actually is helpful to do this. <laughs> so we're in the View tab in the Windows group. And within the Windows group of the View tab, we're going to go to the Freeze Panes item and freeze the panes. So now we have frozen panes. And when we record this, note it's we're going to record this first. Second account here on the trial balance. Second account here on the general ledger. This is a journal entry, by the way, that we recorded in the journal jur general journal. In other words, we journalized the journal entry within the general journal and are now posting this journal entry to the general ledger. So we're going to go back over here. And if to do that, we are going to go to cell AQ8 because it is a debit and we're on the debit side. We're going to use formulas because it's very important to use formulas in case there's a problem. Formulas help a lot. And then we're going to say equals and point to that 20,500, which is in cell C8 and enter. If we go back on it, we see there it is. If we just want to type in there to get used to this, just equals C8, it will work. If you type in just hard coding the number 20,500, that'll work too. But it's better to, to uh, use the, the formatting. So there we have that. And then we're going to go to the other side of this which is going to be the owner's capital. So again, if I scroll back over here, that's going to be way down here. So uh, it's going to be in the blue item. So it's an order assets, liabilities, equity. It's going to be in the same order over here. Here's assets in green. And there's the liabilities in orange. And there's the equity. So we want to be over here. I'm in cell uh, BH14. And I'm going to say that that equals and I'm going to point to this 20,500, and that's going to increase this equity account from 2,897 to 23,378. If you get some cells like this ever happening, that means it doesn't fit in, in the cell. So to fix that, we're going to go up top to this item here, and we're just going to widen the cells out a bit, and there we have that so that they fit. And scroll back over there are those items now what did that do uh once again now if we look at our financials this is now what we have added and it is now being populated here that is being generated from what we just entered in the uh general ledger and we just adjusted this in the general ledger so that has created the trial balance now and the trial balance is of course in balance meaning debits minus the credits are zero or the debit of 20,500 owed to us plus the inventory asset is what is basically owed to the owner. The owner has claim to those rights of the company at this point. Uh, in reality, that might not be true because we haven't entered the vendors yet. <laughs> but at this point, that's what we have on the books and that's what would be populated as we enter this data as we go. The same information is used to create the financials. So the financials that we would just jump over to within QuickBooks uh, would be going there and there. And these are all going to the financials. If we go all the way to the right again, I'm just going to click the right arrow until we get all the way to the financials one more time. We see our information. There's the receivable. There's the inventory assets. There's our total uh, current assets, which of course is also our total assets. Our liabilities then equals the same. Nothing is in the income statement at this time. And the equity section is showing the uh, beginning balances of the same amount of 23,378 at this point. So that's how this information would just populate it. In QuickBooks, we can just jump right to these financial statements after we just enter a list of people who owe us money. If we go to the detail, we'll see this is what QuickBooks is actually doing. It's actually creating a journal entry like this and then posting that to the general ledger. It does have a general ledger. If we go to the general ledger, we can find it. And then it creates a trial balance and it creates the financials from that. And the reason that's important is because then once we have that information, we can go back and look at how the thing was created. If there's a problem, we can see the detail. We can see the audit trail and figure out what issues may have arrived. Hello, in this presentation, we're going to talk about the creation of customer jobs within QuickBooks Pro 2018. If you have been following along with us, we will be continuing along with the Get Great Guitars. If not, that is okay. We're going to show how to set up jobs for customers 
If you have the backup file up to this point in time, you can restore that by going to File, Open and Restore Company. That will get us to the same point in time in terms of the data. We will be entering data. So it is useful if you're following along with the problem to get that data at the same point so that uh, we're all working on the same area. And we have the Home tab open here. I'm going to show where the Home tab is. It's in the Company and Home tab. I also like to have the uh, View Open Items list here, which is in the View tab, Open Windows list. I'm going to click on that. We see then that we have these windows open. That's what we have at this time. I'm actually going to close a couple of them just to have the one window of the home page. Now we're going to work on creating a job for a customer. Jobs can be useful in many different ways. One of the main ways that we're going to use the job is to apply particular costs to a particular job for a particular customer. So if we have a customer that we are doing uh, multiple jobs for, it could be useful for us to track the individual jobs uh, for a particular customer individually. And then when we create the invoice, we can track the uh, information within the invoice to uh, a particular job. So for example, if we were tracking time, if we had kind of a job cost system and we were tracking the time that we have and we put in and the people and our staff are putting in, then we would want to track that to a particular customer and possibly to a particular job. And then when we invoice, we can apply that job, uh, that time to that particular job and create the invoice based on it. So that's one of the major functions that uh, creating jobs could use. They're going to be a versatile tool. That's what we're mainly going to be using it for. So let's see how we would set up a job for a customer. As First, we're going to go to the customer center. So we could go here. I'm going to go to the drop down because it's always an area we can go to no matter where we're at within the program. So we're going to go to customers, customer center. And then here is our customer center. We only have a few clients that we will be working with here in order to create jobs for. We're going to create a job for Jones Guitar. So that's going to be right here. In order to create the job, you must first click on uh, Jones Guitar. So we want to be on that particular customer. Once we are, then we can go up to the new customer and job item here. Select that drop down. And we can add not a new customer, but a job. When we do so, it will add that new job below the current customer. So we're going to say add new job. And all we're going to do on the new job is add the job number. So we're just going to say this is a job number. It's already related to, as you can see, the company name of Jones Guitars. So really all we want here is the new number, 33005. In this case, is going to be the number we are going to apply. I'm going to keep the, the dates. Um, we don't really, the dates aren't going to affect anything as long as they're before the date that we're actually going to be entering data into. And so then we're going to have Jones Guitar and I'm not going to fill out any of the further information, just keeping the job here as it relates to our customer, Jones Guitar. Then we're going to go ahead and say, say or OK. And as you can see, we then have the Jones Guitar, and then here's going to be the job related to Jones Guitar. If we were then to create an invoice, and we wanted to create an invoice for Jones Guitar, but specific to that particular job, tracking what we're doing for that particular job, the maintenance on a guitar for that particular job, we would then go to the home, and just for demonstration, if we went to the Create Invoice, then rather than typing in Jones, we can type in 3005, there's the job. And if we tab through that, we'll then have it related to the customer of Jones. And that will be uh, the information that we can put in related to the particular job for a particular customer. So I'm going to close this out. We're not going to record this. I'm going to close that out. And we're going to create a, custom, a couple more uh, jobs here, or at least one more job for another customer. And so we're going to go back to the customer center. So here is the customer center within the open windows tab. And the next one we're going to create is for Sam, the guitar man. So I'm going to make this a bit larger so we can see the full name. There is Sam. We need to click on the name. And once we are on the name, we're going to go up to a new customer and job. And we're going to create not a new customer, but a new uh, add a job. 
and the job in this case all we need is going to be the number and that number will be for us 4002 this is going to be related particularly to that particular customer and that's all we really need here will be that data all the other data related to the customer within uh, the customer field so I'm going to say OK and there's the job uh, related to Sam the guitar man and we can then apply any information that we're recording for that customer to a particular job and then build that particular job so those are going to be the two jobs we're setting up now just to show how to set up the jobs we'll be working with invoicing later and show how we can tie an invoice out to a particular job and what that will look like what the effect will be on that and what that can do for us in practice